Well, hi again, and uh, thanks for coming to my shop and joining me here while I work on this. Whoops, on this radio. This is a. Uh, Philips 922 radio. I'm just changing out all these paper capacitors on the theory that one of them is failing. And if I get rid of all of them, I will have gotten rid of the one that's failing. That's my theory. We have five more capacitors to do. And they're all fairly simple ones. We'll do this one. 0.01. Now something that worries me about these, let me show you this. In the older capacitors, they show the outer foil. See what it says there? It says outside foil. So this lead is connected to the foil which ends up on the outside of the capacitor. They want this lead to go to the low impedance side of the circuit if possible, or right to ground or, or, or anything like that. You get a new capacitor, now this one's different, so this one doesn't have an outside foil, but if I were a tubular capacitor like some of these others I put in, it there still is an outside foil. It's never marked anymore. It's never marked. So why were they taking such care in the past over this issue and today it's all but just forgotten about. So I'm quite curious about that. Uh, and I wonder if this is something more important than, uh, than I realize. And the, the effects here would be uh, noise, hum, unwanted uh, oscillation even, maybe? So for those of you who have some professional background in this area, you might know something about this. I'd be really interested in hearing about it. Now I did take one of these kinds of capacitors and I tested it on my scope. And you can definitely figure out which, which lead goes to the outside foil if you wanted to. It's quite easy to figure out. You just hook one lead up to the scope and uh, hold the shell of the capacitor in your fingers. Look at what you get on the scope and then use the other lead. Again, holding the uh, capacitor. Why is that not solder? Yeah, I think it is. And you look on the scope and see which one gives you the biggest, uh, basically, noise signal or hum. And, uh, capacitive. Uh, reactants between your fingers and the uh, foil when you got your fingers like that. It's quite distinct, but it's never marked. And, uh, you know, it could even be the case that this kind of capacitor I'm installing may actually be less desirable than the foil kind with the uh, I gotta warn you, I'm no expert in this area either. I have made capacitors my forte. I'm not sure what I've made my forte actually, but uh, I do wonder about that. I think it's a fairly obscure piece of knowledge too. I don't know how many people even know there is an issue. Uh, you can read up on the uh, internet. Maybe if I read more about it, I might find a qualified opinion about the importance of it. Since it sure seems to be ignored today. Or is it just me that's ignoring it? Okay. Here, have a little solder. Now when I'm done, I will have made something like 20 connections in here. 20 connections, the chance of making a bad connection is pretty good. But since I haven't been progressively testing the radio as I did the work, 
I am taking a bit of a risk here. The next guy will be this guy. Point oh one. I've done this capacitor job like this quite a few times now. Uh, I don't normally just do it automatically, as uh, some of my dear viewers will observe. I'm slow on replacing capacitors. Because my experience suggests that it's, you know, much of the time these capacitors are just fine. And they probably will be for years to come. Not always, certainly, but. But here I am doing a wholesale replacement. Ooh, that came up a little short. Yikes. Darn it. Didn't figure on that. He just left reaching out there for it. <sighs> well. I'll cut the lead off this. This one here, just clean it off a little bit. And we'll use this lead. Need some wire. Kind of a silly situation here, but it is what it is. Maybe uh, 20 years from now, when someone's looking at this radio, they'll go, hey, maybe there's a video, and jump on YouTube or whatever is around at that time and find this video <laughs> of me working on the same radio. What are the chances of that happening? And that guy could even be me. <laughs> years from now I'll be uh, I'll be 77 years old 20 years from now I just can't imagine what kinds of things are going to be in our hands 20 years from now since I couldn't imagine most of the stuff that's in our hands now although you know I did invent social networking and I did invent the internet. It's just I never told anybody <laughs> about it. So I got no credit, no credit for it. I'll have to tell the story of me inventing social networking. Uh, analog style social networking. <laughs> and you guys think I'm kidding too, don't you? No, I'm not kidding. It looks like three more to go. So let's go after this one next here. This one is another. Oh, 0 0.0033. These are all capacitor sizes, which are not the ones I have in my stock. 0 0.0033. Zero, zero, three. Point zero, zero, three. Okay. But it's supposed to be three, three.
once again, I mean, these capacitors are going to be weak. The radio will still operate. I'm going to put in a 0 0.03 instead of a 0 0.033. I mean, we're out there in what? Fourth decimal place. Really? If I put this whole thing back together and the radio doesn't work worth a hoot, it could be all these wrong capacitors. Ah. I don't think so. I always joke that the reason half these capacitors are in here is because they had a surplus of them in the uh, radio warehouse at the uh, factory. And they were told to use those things up. Another possibility in this radio, as I've been told by those who may well know better than me, is the sound I was hearing, the crashing sound that we're trying to solve here. It could be coming from a resistor. And I can kind of see that. I can see a, a resistor starting to go open. And uh, funny little things going on inside it, particularly if it's a resistor with a high voltage across it. I think that would be critical. You're not going to get that effect from low voltage. And I don't know that for sure, to be honest with you. It's just, just my opinion. And there could be some resistors in particular circuit locations where failure uh, would generate that kind of effect. Um, and I'm not sure I can reason that out too well. But uh, not any failing resistor would cause that kind of uh, noise, depending upon where it is in the circuit. Uh, we've also isolated it. We, we, we know it's not in the audio circuit. We know it's probably in the uh, first RF amp. Detect I can't remember the detector, what was on the circuit. Uh, first thing is the mixer tube followed by one uh, IF amplifier. So in those two circuits is where this crashing is coming from. And of course the two IF cans are in there. So where I think there's a good chance this is coming from. Two more to go. Now this one doesn't look so healthy, does it? But you can't tell much from the look. 400 volts, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. I'm happy about that because I really, I really stocked up on 0 0.01 <laughs> capacitor. So, so I got the warehouse problem. Use up those 0.01s. video production point of view here, I'm doing a series of videos, one right after the other. So my experience of this is that it's one long continuous job here. So I could mention something in video one and then mention it again in video two without even explaining what I'm mentioning because I can't really relate to the fact that I'm in another video. So if I've said something, you kind of wonder, well, where the heck's that coming from? If you haven't watched the earlier videos, it could be coming from there. Okay, another thing too is, you see, I'm just leaving the camera sitting while I do all this. If I were repositioning the camera and trying to get better shots, which I know you would appreciate, uh, this would take me a lot longer. And with... Uh, you know, a dozen capacitors to do. Adding five minutes, twelve times, so that's another hour. Uh, probably wouldn't take 
five minutes each time I reposition the camera. Well, plus if I get the camera in close, you know what? It's just another clutter up. We're down to the last one, I think. Look at that. Okay, let's do it. The last one, then we're into testing. Mm -hmm. And it's a point zero zero six eight, which I make out to be a point zero zero seven. I don't have a zero zero seven. Come on. I got point zero zero six. I have one point zero zero six here. No, it's not. That's an eight. What? They're all eights. What's this thing supposed to be? A point zero zero three three. So point zero three point zero zero three. Point zero zero three three, and this is a point zero zero three. I'm gonna go with this. I hope I'm not mucking it up here. I don't think I am though. Now that last capacitor. Whoops. close to testing this guy. Very, very close. Indeed. Now, if it behaves exactly the same, I won't feel so bad. If it uh, works, hey, hey, hallelujah. If it exhibits a new problem, I'll be very sad. A sad boy. So that's what we got out of there. All these older guys. Put them with my collection here in the dead component can. Quick uh, inspection of my work here. Yeah, I gotta resolder that. I just, I just cut off the soldered part. <laughs> it was sticking out. Okay. Lordy B, I think that's it. We are ready to uh, to test. Doesn't look very well soldered down there. Let's see if we can improve. 
improve that a little bit. That's a little bit better. <coughs> I think she's ready for a test. Let's give her a test in the next video.